first time I saw the trailer with the theater, the audience actually collectively clapped for it at the end. And that does not happen very often. In retrospect, that was like maybe the biggest thrill of all was seeing that audience kind of recognize every one of those tropes and cheer for it and think, you know, this could be a really special movie. Everybody was looking for the next big parody kind of movie after scary movie success. When we started it, it was really important to us that it had a story that would stand on its own. Yeah. That, it's, that it didn't just parody movies. Because if someone didn't understand a reference or know a movie, at least they'd still be enjoying you know, the story that we were telling. We wanted to start with an idea, a concept that had been featured in many movies, and that was The Bet. I'm gonna pick the most hopeless girl at this school, and I'm gonna bet that you can't turn her into prom queen. It took us a while to really nail our Jake and Janie, which was the most important, you know, obviously roles that we needed to cast. Kyler Lee came in and read for Amanda when we really couldn't find the right Janie. And that's when I, it sort of hit me that maybe we should try Kyler, because we can always find another Amanda, which we did. Uh, so we gave her a shot to audition for Janie, and we really loved her. And Chris Evans came in literally like the last week of casting. And you know, this 19 year old kid from Boston, you know, sort of strolled in and uh, I remember he lacked all fashion sense as I recall. <laughs> he did not have a great outfit on. And we had over a hundred speaking roles in, in the script. We took a lot of time just to make sure everybody, no matter how small or how big their parts were, were, were exactly who we were looking for. My first uh, time in, I was reading for Bruce, and here were my thoughts, and I think I may have even voiced this in the room. The town that I grew up in is a place called Fort Lee, New Jersey, and over the course of when I was a little kid there to when I was done with high school, I went to school with so many Asian kids, Japanese, Korean, Chinese, and I saw white guys legitimately doing what Bruce in Not Another Teen Movie was supposed to be doing, and so I, I saw that firsthand. I even told that to, the, to Joel Gallon, the director and the producers in the room, I was like, guys, I've seen this in action. I'm your man. As far as the cameos for the movie, uh, some of them I think were just people who happened to be available, whether that was Melissa Joan Hart or uh, Sean Patrick Thomas. But one of the exciting things was after the initial cut of the movie, there were a couple of reshoots and we decided that we needed something bigger to happen in the finale scene at the airport. And Mike and Joel went after Molly Ringwald, who is kind of the most iconic face of the entire teen movie genre. Let me give you a little piece of advice here, Jake. Why don't you lose the I'm the cute and sensitive popular boy with the big sideburns routine? It's just too pathetic. And for once, tell Janie what's true in your heart. We actually set up a screening in New York just so she'd see the movie basically cut, including the old ending, so she would see she would be part of a quality uh, product, and she immediately said she would be uh, happy to do it. That turned her around. Yeah, that but turned I mean, her around. But I mean, at first, yeah. she, didn't want, to, she no. didn't want to do it. She didn't want any part of a, anything that had anything to do with teen movies. I'm the wise janitor. I'm here to impart knowledge, help youngsters overcome their fears, also replace the sanitary cakes in the urinals. But right now, I'm here to help you get your throw back. Well, the Mr. T story is interesting because um, we had cast Mr. T. He had agreed to do it. He came to the big table read and crushed it. Every one of his lines, everything, people were laughing their asses off. But afterwards, his representative was saying the movie was maybe too racy and didn't jive with his beliefs. I guess when he had agreed to do it initially, he really didn't read the script that carefully. And finally, he came back around. He believed. And he believed, and he agreed to do it. The music was great, and, yeah. and the, Joel's the only guy that could have, by the way, pulled all this off, meaning getting all these people to say yes, because this is all the years of MTV Movie Award experience that went into this. Now we thought, oh, wouldn't it be funny to include Janie's Got a Gun as the song that the Heath Ledger-esque character sings to um, Janie? Janie's Got a Gun. Janie Briggs Got a Gun. She's Got a Gun! Also, we had a big song in the football scene with the Foo Fighters, uh, Hero, My Hero, and I literally had to screen the movie for a girl couldn't come, but Taylor came, the drummer. And we also screened the movie for Marilyn Manson, so he would do his song. What's she doing here? She graduated like four years ago. 
I think enough years have gone by that we can reveal that Ben Folds uh, wrote the music for the musical scene in Not Another Teen Movie. I wish I didn't make that bet. That's not the guy I want to be. And this is a true story. He didn't have a piano where he was, but he was thinking about the tune in his head. But he hadn't actually played it in the pian on the piano, and he sat down and played us the song, at least the first half of it, and it was perfect. And Chris Evans and Kyler were there. You know, we knew that they had told us they could sing, but to us, when we said, let's do a musical, it didn't matter how good or bad the singers were, because they weren't gonna have that many lines, and, and whether they could sing or not, either we could fix it or we can embrace it, because, you know, this is a comedy. I'm supposed to just be saying, prom tonight. That's all he wanted me to say, you know, was prom tonight. And I don't know why, but on one of them, I just went, prom tonight. And he just stops and he goes, you're not Neil Diamond. Just sing it like a human being sings. And it was one of the greatest notes I've ever been given, and I am forever grateful to Ben Folds and Joel Gallen for allowing that moment to happen in history. At that time, I was not that far out of college, and I remember thinking, if we could become one of those movies that kids quote and watch in college again and again and again and get high and watch, uh, that for me was like the ultimate compliment if we could sort of get there. And I think in some ways, the movie Not Doing Well uh, made it more of a cult hit. I mean, it certainly helped uh, that as time went on and the proliferation of the parody movie sort of hit its peak, you know, with you know, epic movie and superhero movie and date movie and all that, that people still look back at this one and go, oh, no, 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 that one was the best. I think Not Another Teen Movie for a while put the nail on the coffin of teen movies because you can't use the conventions that you've already seen spoofed I think we successfully killed the teen movie <laughs> franchise.